I hear a lot of people talk about wanting to be able to play the right notes, but it's not very often that I hear people talk about producing the right sound. The piano is a very expressive and responsive instrument. It can produce a multitude of colors and also mimic other instruments. So why would you want to just play notes? Welcome back to Joy Practicing. I'm your host, Fabi Talan. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Let's take a look at the mechanism of the piano. To simplify, when you press a key, there is a lever activating a hammer that swings and hits the string to make it vibrate. In effect, how you strike the key, where, and with how much surface of your fingers, all will produce different sounds. The velocity of the hammer hitting the string will determine the volume produced. The faster you strike a key, the faster the hammer will swing at the string, producing a louder sound. On the opposite, when you enter slowly into the key, the hammer will correspond and in the event produce a softer sound. Remember to keep your elbows hanging and close to your body at all times. There's no need to retract any weight or raise your shoulders in order to play soft. Where you strike the key will affect the sound outcome. To play further inside the key close to the board will produce a more muted tone. The further out you go, the more open the timbre will be. This is of great use, especially when you want to differentiate voices in a fugue or there's a setting, a dialogue setting between two or three characters. It's just like having multiple level of keyboards that exist on one surface. The amount of surface of your fingers that you use to enter the key will also produce different sounds. Using the tips of your fingers will produce a pointy, brighter sound as opposed to more flesh of your finger when you will produce a rounder, softer tone. Utilizing these three elements will get you quite far because the possibility for combinations are quite endless. And remember, the hands don't have to do the same thing. They could be doing two completely different things at the same time. The dynamic markings that are used in the musical notation are indicators that a composer uses to describe what he or she wants. So a piano mezzo forte, forte is different for every composer. And often these dynamic markings comes with another instruction that describes the mood of the passage. The leggero, marcato, scherzando, dolcissimo, and many more are all indicators of moods and underlying characters that the composer may intend for the passage. Our job is then to imagine the realm of sound and figure out how to produce it with our physical build and ability.
Let's take a look at this Clementi Sonata. To do a jabby, bombastic Prokofiev fortissimo here will be completely out of place. If you look at the rest of the piece, which is very melodic and thin in texture, here it's a complete opposite. The composer uses more instruments, these chords, therefore in itself already fuller sounding, and the effect intended is more round and enveloping rather than a jab or a slap. In order to do this, I flatten my fingers and feel like my hands are two whales taking a dive. I'm aiming to vibrate the furthest end of the string, not going down to the bottom of the key bed, but going back up and releasing the tension as soon as I hear the sound. Middle register will by default sound louder than the upper register where the notes have fewer amounts of strings and vice versa. If you have a forte fortissimo passage, that doesn't mean that every element there are to be played fortissimo. If you do that, the sound loses depth and becomes flat. It will be really hard to discern the different voices and components. In order to have some kind of shape, you have to prioritize and trim down the supporting elements. Remember last time I mentioned that the point of sound is very close to the surface of the key. You don't have to go all the way down to produce a sound. Going at different depth will also produce different intensities. When you shift your focus from playing the right notes to finding and producing the right sound, your practice time will become a playground for your curiosity. To any creative mind, practicing this way won't feel like a chore. Stop practicing to punish yourself for the things that you cannot do, but instead, find out what you can do well and build upon it. I hope that makes sense and adds a layer of spectrum to your understanding of practicing. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions for pieces or topics to discuss, please email me at joyofpracticing at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.